wrestling fans. It is Monday, September 23rd. And it is time for the Monday Night Raw post show here on Mega Powers Radio. Got a fun little show to talk about tonight. Monday Night Raw just finished, and we're going to be running down everything that happened with our slew of hosts that we have here. I'll be your host this evening, Mike Payton, lead host of Keeping K Fame, amongst other things. Also joining me this evening, first off, we got the lead host of Unanimous Decision MMA, and also a member of many other things, including Otaku Nation here on Mega Powers Radio. And he's guested on a few other shows recently as well, Mr. Steven Juego. A man of many, many different busy tasks. Um, always good to be here. I uh, love the community that we've got going on here. Looking forward to some call-ins. Let's rock and roll. All right. And also with us here, regular here on the Raw Post Show, Mr. Paul Hibbard. What's shaking, Mr. Paul? Not mad. Not much. Living that same old, same old genius life I live. Let's do this. Genius. Oh I, I can't. I can't call it anything else. It's genius. <laughs> I was watching a interview with Cameron and Bill O'Reilly earlier, and he pretty much had the same attitude. <laughs> I've seen that interview. That's a funny interview. <laughs> you bad. Oh, yeah, you bad. You bad. You bad. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, Monday Night Raw, it was it was okay. I mean, it, it, I I gotta say, it passed by really fast as opposed to the past couple of weeks where it's just felt like those three hours have just dragged and dragged. Tonight it felt like Raw actually just just kind of went by. I mean, I can't say this too much. I remember too much. Uh, we had the Miz TV segment. We had that final match that just went off the air. But it, it was a fun show. I mean, let's just go around and get your guys' quick overall thoughts. Paul, why don't you give us your overall thoughts first? Uh, well, compared to last week, I freaking loved it. Uh, the Chicago crowd really helped out a lot. It was a it was a bonus to have the Chicago crowd plus the anticipation of CM Punk coming back. Um, <laughs> and like you said, he was he was in a really bad mood, and they just ruined his whole night. Uh, uh, I thought the Miz TV Big Show segment was. Okay, could have been a little bit better. Maybe have Big Show say something. Uh, I just looked like he kind of was going in there numb and just ready to knock somebody out. Uh, the the whole Triple H, you know, trying to be fair and everything, you know, it's taken away from that controversy, I think, uh, brought the uh, levels a little bit down. But overall, it was a good show. And, hey, best of all, really fast Divas match. Done like that. <laughs> Especially with all of them out there. We got to see lots of beautiful faces amongst other parts. And it was in and out. <laughs> I think they did a really fast diva match because Bree is still recovering from that uh uh what is it, her ankle or her shin it's her shin. Well what does it matter? But, Three quarters of the ladies didn't even get into the match. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever, who cares? <laughs> uh Steven, what about you? What did you think about tonight's raw overall? Uh, generally, I thought it was a pretty good show. Um, I won't divulge into too much details until we actually hit on it. But, uh, yeah, I had no issues with it overall. It was a good pace set. Nothing felt too sluggish or too awkward. And it didn't have the Mrs. Parents on. So, I mean, there's nothing <laughs> you can complain about. So we've already touched on it a few times. Let's talk about what was probably the most memorable thing from tonight's Raw. That was the Miz TV segment. Earlier in the night, Miz was told by Triple H that he was going to be hosting a edition of Miz TV, and his special guest would be The Big Show. Now, Miz started out first talking about how he would set revenge on Randy Orton, but first he was going to interview his guest, The Big Show. And immediately the Miz starts questioning him, how could he do what he did to Dusty Rhodes the previous week on Raw? Stephanie McMahon ends up interrupting mid-segment and tells Miz that he's being dis- disrespectful and then goes on to run him down telling him how much of a failure he is and how much of a failure he was in front of his parents. She then commands the Big Show to knock him out. Big Show follows along, exits the ring, walks right to the back, not saying a word, as Paul had said. It was a pretty pretty fun little segment. We saw Miz hopefully get taken out for a while. Um, references to last week to keep that going with getting the Miz involved with this storyline because we have to get as many people opposing this faction as possible if we're going to be making it look like it's a serious threat. We have to see as many people getting affected as possible. And the Miz is perfect fodder to have someone who's just, you know, passing by as opposed to the overarching story like Daniel Bryan has. Uh, Steven, why don't you tell us what you thought about this segment? Oh, God, I fucking loved every moment of this segment when (laughs) Stephanie came out. And I I literally said in the chat that we was having... Oh, I'm loving this segment right now, prior to Stephanie coming out, and I thought she was actually going to take away from it. She comes out, and she's the best part of it. She absolutely shoots on the Miz, runs him down, and basically tells everyone what the fucking Miz really is. He's just, he's essentially the PR guy. 
they don't really have much for him to do in the storyline, and it does add to it. I mean, maybe it'll gain, uh, gain some sympathy for the Miz. They tr- she truly did shoot on him, and it was awesome. And what I love, how she's talking about the Miz getting beat down in front of his parents. Doesn't mention one bit about Miz's dad's reaction. No, just the mother. <laughs> just the just mother. Your parents, just your mother. Maybe it wasn't really his dad. Maybe it was his stepdad. That would explain so much because he does not <laughs> think going to spawn the Miz. Uh, Paul, what do you think about this segment? I thought it was pretty good. Uh, is it just me or whenever Stephanie starts beating down a guy, does anybody else get a little excited? Because I, I don't know. Anyway, sorry. No, it was a really good segment. I agree with what Steven said. Stephanie was the best part of the segment because let's not forget, Miz is a former U.S. champ, former tag team champ, former WWE champ, former IC champ, and what is he now? He's the most must-see WWE superstar because that's where they send him. They send him to the Be a Star rallies. They send him to the supermarket supermarket openings. They send him to all the PR stuff that all the other superstars are too quote unquote busy to do. Um, it was a great shoot on The Miz. Um, I wish Big Show would have talked a little bit more, but I kind of see what they're doing with him. Stephanie has got him enforcing so much that he's just kind of becoming numb to the whole idea. Yeah, I just, noticed that was the quickest he'd ever punched someone. It was like, eh, it's just The Miz. I think I, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a pattern because he's just gonna he's gonna be like, well, you know, I'm doing this. I still got a job and. Nobody else is getting fired because of me. I mean, I I think I'll just go out and punch some people and take out my frustrations on them. I uh, think he'll clock Triple H eventually. That's- oh, if he doesn't clock Triple H or Stephanie, I would much rather prefer Stephanie just because it's the woman. And oh, I, my God. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's 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 been being kind of a bitch. Yeah, but they'll never replay it again. It'll be like the frozen stills of when Kane Tombstone Linda. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, all right, guys. We're, we got a caller on the line. We're going to bring him on. We got a caller from the four one two. I believe it's our usual caller, JD from Pittsburgh. I believe it is. JD, how you doing, bro? Hey guys, happy Monday. What's going on tonight? Oh, we're we're all feeling pretty good. We we feel like we we had a step up for this raw. Nothing too amazing, but man, it, it felt good to have a show that I could actually just sit back and kind of enjoy watching, as opposed to the past two weeks, which have been more of a struggle. But uh, what was it like for you, man? We I don't think we got your thoughts last week. You you were MIA, so uh, we missed was, you last yeah, week, JD. Yeah, I, I was a little MIA last week, and I, I'm back this week. Though um, last week's show, however, I mean, you take a look at last week. They made Dusty Rose uh, look like a bitch in more ways than like Stephanie. Little pig headed whore McMahon decides to embarrass Dusty Rose, needless to say. Well, how's the shoe on the other foot tonight, guys? Oh, that's right. I guess the shield, your little bodyguards, your little piss ass bodyguards, got their ass handed to them in the handicap match tonight. Um, for the most part, it was a good show in Chicago. The crowd was definitely fired up tonight, you can tell, especially when Punk came through the crimp. But once again, little weasel Paul Heyman has to have his little bitch boys cry back in Curtis Axel, save him, because basically, he can't get out of that so-called wheelchair and take the beating like a man. Well, guess what? In two weeks, he's going to fly back in his little bodyguard entourage, however, come down to an end. Because I think Punk is going to beat the holy hell out of Ryback in more ways than one. As far as the other things go tonight, uh, the Diva thing, I'm just getting sick of seeing it every week. I'm glad for once, at least Stephanie, I mean, there's one thing I will say Steph that did right tonight, but definitely put AJ in her place. I'm glad someone had the ball pardon the pun, to tell AJ, quit acting like a little pretty bitch, you know? Why don't you defend the belt once in a while, AJ? Why don't you just keep your mouth shut and defend the belt once in a while instead of worrying about your total divas, little uh, friends, mind you? I mean, look well, who's she going to defend it against? Fine. What's that? Who's she going to defend it against? Probably Natalia, probably Brie again, I would imagine, at Battleground or something like that. She's got, unless they're going to bring another diva in, however... But, I mean, the one person I would like to see brought back, and I told you this about a couple of weeks ago, I'd like to see someone come back, why not Beth Phoenix? Why not Kelly Kelly? Bring someone mm-hmm. in that has potential, you know? Because right now, AJ is just a disgrace to the title. And speaking of titles, however, would someone please tell the Shield to learn how to defend the belt instead of holding on to them week after week? I mean, it looks like right now, after what we saw tonight, and I hate to say it, we might be seeing Cody and Goldust maybe going after those tag belts, possibly at Battleground, it looks like. I'm like, Ooh. they're going to change all. I mean, it could very well happen. You saw what happened when they came into the crowd and jumped the shield right before the handicap match, and they could set up something like that. But uh, I, I like how your mind's working pretty, there. 
Yes. Well, all in all, it was a pretty good show tonight in Chicago. I mean, like I said, it was a very good crowd. I mean, the highlight for me tonight, I think, was that handicap match. It was a good main event. The low light was maybe, it was probably the Divas Affair, but you know what? I'm not going to go with the Divas Affair. This week. I'm going to say it was the whole big show, Stephanie, uh, Miz thing. I mean, every week we have to hear Stephanie say, big show, do my turn. Why don't you grow some balls, Stephanie, and fight them yourself down any little bodyguard, protect you and your little husband every week? Why don't you go to set a ball and get in the ring and do it yourself? Oh, that's right. You have no balls because Wait. you have your husband basically along with the shield kissing your ass while it's in your week in and week out. That's <laughs> right. You want to see Stephanie McMahon versus The Miz in a match? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying I like to see <laughs> someone put Stephanie, I like to see Stephanie in a match with anybody instead of having her little boy toys basically defend her and her husband every week because she doesn't have the guts to get in the ring again. And her husband... J.D.'s got a good point. Years. J.D.'s got a good point. She used to be a former women's champion. Let's not forget that. Yes. But like I said, every week she's telling people to do her dirty work for her. Slow a set of nuts for once. (laughs) So uh, aside from, um, what what did you like tonight, though? I mean, it sounds like you were turned off a lot by what happened with The Shield and AJ. Oh, you did like what happened to AJ, actually. You liked her being put down. I did. I did. I did. And, and, you know, I mean, the Shield tonight got what was coming, but I thought that was a really good match, like I said. I thought they fought well. Um, I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, I think until Punk got beat up by Cryback and Curtis Axel and the little weasel, Paul Heyman, I mean, Punk's promo just, damn. I mean, every time, whatever time he's in, it's Punk Chicago. When he comes out shooting promos and, like, just really getting the point across and just, Coming from the hip like he did tonight, Howard, you just love it. And tonight, I think Punk's promo until uh, the beatdown, I mean, he had the crowd eating out of his hand in his own town. And I thought he absolutely did brilliant tonight. He really did. Another match that was good, I mean, as much as I don't like this guy at this point, and he's still pretty good as a heel, Alberto Del Rio had a pretty good match with Kofi. But again, they just keep, right now they're stuck in reverse with Kofi because they don't know what to do. But I'll tell you, another thing that they really got to get rid of, get rid of a Fandango. Please, Aww. get rid of him. He is a douche. He is a tool. I am sorry. The dancing team, I mean, we haven't seen the Fandango in Chicago tonight. We saw that. But every week we have to hear JBL say, this is Fandango. Enough already. And that's another thing. JBL, quit sucking up to all these people. Seriously. You know? <laughs> You, you you just hurt me That's deep up. with that one, JD. I'm a huge Fandango fan. I'm very sad to hear this news. Well, on the scale of one, I have to give Raw about, I'd say, seven and a half to an eight out. And it was a fairly decent show tonight. And I'm going to be interested to see what the ratings are this week. But I think they're going to do pretty well tonight. I think they did really well in Chicago. And they had the crowd eating out of their hand. Of course, next week, they, they go down to Velocity. Not a big market town. But, of course, in three couple of weeks, they're going to be in my hometown and. I was supposed to go, but unfortunately I'm not going to be going, but I will be watching on my TV, though. Uh, how do you feel Battleground is developing so far? I mean, how do you feel about this whole situation they decided what to do with the vacant WWE title? It's screwy because I think that Daniel Bryan has gone host twice now. I mean, he totally got screwed over, I thought, after Night of Champions on our last Monday night in Cleveland. I mean... I mean, you didn't say him say to Scott Armstrong, they got us, Daniel, they got us. It's just Triple H playing his little power game, if you will, because obviously he thinks that Daniel Bryan is a threat to him. The only person that he should be worried about right now is his little buddy, Randy Orton. The reason why right now they're screwing Daniel Bryan is because they think that Randy Orton should deserve everything coming to him. Well, like I told you before, Randy Orton has two strikes on him right now. Two strikes. One more, buddy. You're out of there. And right now, I think we saw what he did to RBD tonight, like he did last week to Miz, was as vicious as they come. But obviously, what did the McMahon do to Randy Orton? Nothing, because obviously he's kissing their ass every week, basically. That's all he's doing. <laughs> all right, J.D., anything else in your mind this week, man? No, I just want to, I mean, I don't know if you guys are big baseball fans. I mean, maybe you guys are, maybe you're not. I just want to get a cheap plug in if I could. My uh, yeah, Pittsburgh Pirates baseball team won in Chicago tonight. They are going to the playoffs for the first time since 92 as they won their 90th game tonight in Wrigley, 2-1. Oh, great so for them, man. I, 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 go ahead. 
Yeah, great for the Pirates, man. I mean, I remember uh, I, I haven't been a baseball fan in a number of years, but I was a huge Mets fan back then. I know what it's like to go for a long stretch without making it to the big time. So great for the Pirates, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, it's a good feeling. I mean, it's been a rough week. I mean, we had rough home stand losing three or four to San Diego, losing to Cincinnati this past weekend. But they started the final week of the season with a big win tonight, and now we're in the playoffs. So it is a good, good thing, let me tell you. I'll tell you right now, I think the Mets will be back there next year. I mean, if David Rice stays healthy and uh, they have uh, that Harvey guy stay healthy with any injury, I think the Mets could make some noise in the East next year. But this year was a rough year for them. But like I said, the Pirates are in it. And I think the Pittsburgh Pirate Nation here in Pittsburgh, they're finally happy tonight to say we are in the playoffs. J.D., I have to ask you, as a Pittsburgh fan, are you, yeah. do you think it's panic? do you think it's panic time for the Steelers right now? Yes, I do, actually. And I was at that game last night. I really do. I think Todd Haley right now has played himself out of the city. I mean, a lot of people do not like him. Ben right now is making too many mistakes, and it's not going to get easy now. I mean, you've got to go to London this week. You play Adrian Peterson. I have a funny feeling it's going to be a blowout there. You've got a bye week you should be thankful about, but then you've got the struggling Jets, however, even though they had 20 penalties yesterday. 20 against Buffalo. That was just an embarrassment. I mean, Rex Ryan, I think, is almost out of a job in New York, and Mark Sanchez is going to be out of New York. If you don't win that game, you just might as well just say, it's time to say 0-16. But I think they'll beat the Jets. Then you play Baltimore after that. And Baltimore, yeah, they beat Houston yesterday coming back in the second half and beating them pretty good. But they were struggling earlier. I don't think this is the same Baltimore team we saw a year ago. But it's still early to tell. Then you play at Oakland, and the Oakland team beat pretty good tonight by Denver. The Steelers have got to find a way to turn around the next month. Otherwise, it is definitely the end of the season. But like I said, I'll tell you right now, they don't beat Minnesota and London this week. Then I can safely say, yeah, the season's over, and it's definitely beyond panic time. It's season ending over, and it's time for hockey season. So do you think, it, so do you think it's renovation time for the Steelers? Yeah, I think it's time. To, I mean, you're going to definitely see a lot of changes like you did those last five. You're going to see a lot of changes more coming up this next offseason. I would not be surprised. Yeah, definitely. Oh. So how's Pittsburgh's XFL team doing? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing right now that Pittsburgh's having besides the Pirates is that the Penguins are starting hockey soon. And hopefully this year Crosby and Malkin stay healthy. With the new division and everything, it's going to be interesting in the NHL. But I think the Penguins might have a chance. Hopefully they get to the cup of At least I hope they do. <laughs> All right, J.D. Thanks for calling in, bro. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next Monday. Take care, dude. We'll see you all next week. And, of course, anyone else listening, if you would also like to call and join us here in the show, the number to do that is 760-512-7247. That's area code 760-512-7247. As you see, you could call in and talk to us about tonight's Monday Night Raw or hell. Call us and talk about baseball. <laughs> I can't promise we'll be able to provide anything in return, but we'll we'll do our best. <laughs> I know nothing about sports. <laughs> Thank goodness you're here, Paul. I, I try to keep up. Um, so we we were last talking about um, the the Miz segment. I think we got all we're going to get out of that. I think the next big thing to talk about is the return of CM Punk tonight in his hometown of Chicago. Of course, the crowd absolutely loved him, but I got to say this this speech he gave. He was talking about the Red Wings and how they pull it out in, in overtime, pull the victory out or some crap. I, I don't know. This this was really boring. CM Punk, ever since his return after WrestleMania, has just been completely off to me. I, I cannot get into anything he's doing. Uh, Paul Heyman ended up interrupting. He came out with this little motor scooter. I'm guessing it's the same one they probably had sitting around when Big Johnny used to ride it around. <laughs> Uh, after the end of Paul Heyman's bit, he tries to ride away in a scooter, but the scooter's battery must be dead because it's not moving. CM Punk goes to attack him. However, Ryback and Curtis Axel are there to make the save and lay a little beat down on CM Punk. CM Punk does manage to get up and walk away, though, so it's not anything huge that we have to worry about CM Punk being out of action for a while. But, yeah, that's, that's that. So what do you guys think about that, Paul? Uh, I, Sorry, I, I, I hate to correct the, the host on of the show because I know it's extremely rude, but oh, oh. he he was talking about the Blackhawks. Who <laughs> were that's that's how much I know about sports. That, uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's okay. He was he was talking about the Blackhawks facing the Red Wings. Um, but uh, I, I I honestly thought this was one of his better promos, as you said, ever since WrestleMania, when he did didn't he have the title at WrestleMania? This WrestleMania. Yeah, he just oh not this. 
No, we I'm... bought The Undertaker last WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. I'm confused. It's been so long since he held the title. I can't remember the last time he held it. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, ever since WrestleMania, he has been kind of off. I thought this was one of his better promos. It helped that he was in Chicago. It helped that the crowd fired him up. I really thought it was a nice moment when he came out and said, you know, you guys ruined a perfectly good bad mood for me, but when I came out here, all I could do was smile. Uh, I thought that was a really nice moment he had with his hometown crowd. Um, he put up a good fight against Axel and Ryback. I, we haven't seen many on stage brawls. He tossed Axel into the uh, LED screen of the Raw logo, and then he tossed Ryback a couple of times into some lights on the side of the stage. And it was a good, it was a good, uh, uh, it was a good little brawl. Um, the whole Paul Heyman coming out and. And Paul Heyman just cannot shoot worth a damn anymore. I just, every time he picks up the mic, I'm like, okay, what's on Adult Swim? Oh, look, it's King of the Hill. I think I'll watch that for a couple minutes and then come back to Punk. Uh, it, it, you know, it, good, not great. Uh, awesome Piano Man in the chat actually, I think, summed it up pretty well. CM Punk came out and he cut a John Cena promo. <laughs> <laughs> I know how much you love John Cena, Paul. He's very he, he he was right. He that was a John Cena promo and it only helped that it was CM Punk cuz I like CM Punk a lot more than I like John Cena. Steve, I believe you're a big Punk fan. How how have you felt about him lately and what do you think about his performance tonight? He's um well, I'm glad they're doing something with him. I understand they can't keep him in the title picture while they're trying to build Daniel Bryan up. He's um Daniel Bryan's getting his time in the spotlight as CM Punk did. Um they're a lot more successful with Daniel Bryan. But as far as Punk now goes, I feel as if he's had called off a lot. And I'm hoping this inevitably leads to, say, a Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk 2 match. Because I think he needs to get that win back against Brock. Or at least just to make him seem more credible before they throw him back into the main event title scene again. Plus, personally, I thought the Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk for one match was awesome. Uh, going on from that to tonight's events, the promo was pretty cheesy, but it catered to the crowd, so it did what it needed to do. I don't mind it so much when there's a hot crowd and CM Punk doesn't churn these crappy uh, fan catering promos out every week. So it worked. I enjoyed it. As far as his interaction with Paul and CM Punk, it worked a lot better than we've seen in the past. Even those guys together have called off, and that's something I never thought I'd see. Uh, the beatdown did its job. It made Ryback look a bit more of a beast. Again, he's another guy that's called off in most recent months. So, at the end of it all, it was a good promo. I was satisfied. I was very worried at the end of that thing when Ryback tossed CM Punk onto the floor. He was trying to toss him onto the table. CM Punk barely nicked that table and crashed right onto the concrete from... Uh, uh, Ryback was standing on top of a, a equipment box. I was actually very worried about CM Punk after that whole thing happened because he just he he totally missed that table. That table did nothing for CM Punk. CM Punk seems to get injured a lot these days, though. Yeah, yeah, they're starting to. Uh... He's been really banged up for a while now. I mean, he only got a month off after WrestleMania. He he yeah. really needs a longer break. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the issue though. He gets banged up a lot, and I don't know if it's because he's a smaller guy and he's taken a lot of well nasty bumps. And I think it just goes to show how much of a hard worker that guy is. Yeah, he, he's on an abusive schedule. I mean, he's probably the second hardest worker under John Cena, and uh, with John Cena out, that probably makes him the highest. At, well, probably Randy Orton at this point. And well, he's only got well, two weeks until Battleground against Ryback. You know who seem you know which guys like on the roster who wrestles a high-paced style but never seems to get banged up, and that's Daniel Bryan. I've never recalled him having an injury, and I hope I don't jinx that. He's kind of like the Bret Hart of this era. Just keeps going and going, never gets hurt or hurts none anybody. That or he's not bitching about it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I've, I've been a, a fountain of misinformation tonight. First, I had the wrong sports team, and I, I also gave the wrong person credit with that quote about the John Cena promo from CM Punk earlier. That, that was actually Corey Krause in the chat room, not Awesome Piano Man. I like you both. I want to give you a shout-out to you both. You always keep the chat room a lot of fun. So uh, I'm going to give you both a shout-out, but that one specifically does go to Corey Krause. Um, yeah, no credit for you, Piano Man. <laughs> Um, so something else to talk about was the main event that just went off the air. We ended up with an 11 versus three elimination match between all the baby faces who came out to save Daniel Bryan at the end of the show last night against the shield. 
<coughs> pardon me, sorry, getting over a little bit of a sickness I had this past week. Um, it, it was a pretty fun little match. We got to see a little bit of everyone in there. Rob Van Dam got eliminated first after a beatdown he received earlier in the night. We'll get to that. Um, ultimately ended up with Daniel Bryan getting the final pin on Ambrose. Roman Reigns getting eliminated relatively early by the Usos combination. They said it was the first time Roman Reigns was ever pinned. I, I was shocked the Shield lost this, honestly. I was expecting them to really show themselves as the dominant team, able to come up over all 11. But, you know, they still fought off very well. But, unfortunately, what they fought was not enough. Daniel Bryan being the lone man standing tall. What happened to the other people? Because when they announced the winner, they just said Daniel Bryan. Did the other three guys get disqualified or something? They went catch that? No, Ziggler uh, clotheslined uh, Reigns over the uh, rope after Reigns and Ambrose came in, and it was Rollins who got pinned last. Sorry, Mike, to correct you again. Um, no, I didn't say – I said Rollins was pinned last. You, you said Ambrose. Oh, did I? I think you oh, did. Oh, my goodness. I am no, 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 no. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could you be could wrong. just be fucking with you because you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll believe it. I, I probably did. But anyway, continue your point. Uh, Ziggler clotheslined Reigns over the ropes. And the – oh, no, I'm sorry. He closed line Ambrose over the ropes, and the Usos double-kicked uh, Reigns in the chest. The Usos do their leap over the top rope to get both Ambrose and Reigns, and then Ryan goes – and then Brian goes on his little uh, – uh, I'm going to say it, five moves of doom to uh, pin uh, Seth Rollins. Oh, no, you didn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everybody has them. Everybody has them. All the – Top superstars kind of have them. We hate to admit it, but they do. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, but that, yeah, that's what just threw me off was the announcement at the end. They said it was just Daniel Bryan, so those other guys were not eliminated. They were still survivors. Yeah, yeah. they just don't give a shit about giving any other guy the rub. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and as awesome piano man, and I think I am correcting the right person this time. They they should technically announce the winners are the eleven team group or whatever the heck they had as a name for them. Just call it Team Daniel Bryan. The, the anti-establishment. <laughs> Team WWE. So what did you guys think of this match, Paul? I thought it was a really good match. I got scared halfway through when it was six on three, and I was like, holy shit, is the Shield actually going to pull this off? Because I have to say, Roman Reigns gave one of the best showings I have ever seen him give in this match. And if they don't use him as a workhorse in the future, they are going to lose out on millions and millions and millions of dollars, millions of dollars. Um, uh, I I honestly think they should push Titus O'Neil and Roman Reigns as like a little mini feud for a bit because those are two big guys that can go at it for. I mean, we all remember back in the Attitude Era when they had the big guys go at it for half an hour. I mean, yeah, they were kind of just you know heaving around for a bit, but these are two really pure athletes that can actually give really good matches for a sizable duration of time. Uh, I I thought, you know, it was nice that Justin Justin Gabriel didn't get in that match at all, did he? He was in there for about three seconds. Yeah, I, I blinked and he was eliminated. Well, you can't have Justin Gabriel in a main event that doesn't involve the Nexus for too long. Oh, oh, oh the poor Nexus. Where That's a good where are they now segment. Where are the Nexus now? <laughs> Um, that, you know, I mean, Justin Gabriel and Zack Ryder got a little bit of screen time. Not that it mattered. Uh, I mean, the Usos gave a good showing, like they always do. Primetime players, they always come through. It, it, was a, it was a good, solid match. And the Shield proved, you know, why they have been so dominant. You know, it's not just the... I mean, it is the three of them together, but it's not just that. Each individual bring something very important to the table, and tonight we saw that. Awesome piano man dropping bombs about how Justin Gabriel and Zack Ryder main evented in one on Raw. <laughs> <laughs> I love how JTG can't even get a piece of this action. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh you know, there's only room for one, and our truth is there. <laughs> oh, wait, Darren Young and Titus and Neil, never mind. <laughs> yeah, my, just, my racist joke does not work. <laughs> wow, you really are sick tonight. <laughs> uh, plus, Steven, your thoughts on this match? I, I think the true story coming out of this match is fucking hell, Roman Reigns is a beast. Bam. Uh, I mean, damn, did they do a good job of making this look, guy look like a legit main eventer. I mean, he was plowed through those guys, and he should have. Um, I was actually surprised. Um, normally, you have those really smarky guys who 
will bitch about guys getting buried. I go online and people are just laughing that Justin Gabriel got eliminated in four seconds. So um, I guess I was wrong about that one, but I'm just glad how badass Roman Reigns came out looking at this match. I think he's going to be a legit main event or when uh, the Shield finally break up. And I hope they don't break up for a while. I'm liking this uh, free... Well, I was about to say free man band, but then I realized that's a legit team. <laughs> um, I like this... Uh, I, don't, I like this trio, and I love the stuff they do. They All three guys came off looking really strong, taking out the injured guys and the healthy guys before finally being defeated by, by Daniel Bryan. I'm glad they didn't win, because that would have meant Daniel Bryan would have had to lose in a match where he had ten partners. So you couldn't put them over those guys. So I'm glad with the result. I'm glad how everyone who needed to look strong looked strong, which included the Usos, which included Dolph Ziggler. So... This match was just awesome. It was full of action. A lot of guys got to shine. Great outing. It's probably my it's probably my favorite match of the night. Fancy. Um, so so while we're talking about Daniel Bryan, I want to pose a question I also posed to JD earlier. What what is your guys' feelings about their handling of the situation of the vacated WWE title by just putting it on the line in a match with uh, Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan, at Battleground? I believe uh, Daniel Bryan made some kind of stipulation tonight as well. Was it no holds barred or something like that? Do you guys remember what he said? He did. Um, I'm not sure that he said anything. I didn't. I I, I could have missed it, but I I don't. I I can't confirm that he said anything. I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure the chat will correct us if we can't think of it. Yeah. yeah, he he had a speech before the crowd. I thought he had said something that was gonna even the even the playing field, so it wasn't gonna allow for another screwy finish. No holds beard. He <laughs> might have, he, there was a part in the speech where he said, "No special guest referees." No fast count out or no fast counts. You know he was he he was basically guaranteeing a victory. I don't know if he was posing a stipulation. Uh, okay, maybe I was. He he might have he might have I could have missed it. Uh, I don't know. Give all some piano man his chops for the no holds beard comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so Stephen, what did you think about uh, the, how they're handling the situation? Would you like to have seen something bigger come out of this? Perhaps a tournament, or do you think it's fine because these were the two participants in the last match? Um, I'm fine with this. I like the whole uh, vacated title storyline. I'm Daniel Bryan ended up coming out on top at Night of Champions, and now Triple H is essentially giving him the fuck you again. And uh, those guys, those were the two guys in the last uh, championship match, so it makes sense that the le- the playing field's leveled again, and these two are going to go at it once more. So I got no issues with it. Um, I'm going to be interested in to seeing how the battleground main event plan uh, pay like goes um i'm wondering if triple h will get involved or not because he didn't last time it's just a very confusing situation and i'm looking forward to how it plays out assuming they don't botch it paul what do you think about how they handled it um i think they're handling it pretty well i mean uh randy orton would have had a rematch clause whether or not daniel bryan got stripped of the belt anyway um, so, I mean, like Steven said, it's the inevitable conclusion at Battleground. We're going to have this match again. Um, I would like to see something come out, maybe not at Battleground, but sometime in the near, near future, of some kind of evidence that Triple H paid off Scott Armstrong to do the fast count. Uh, like, paid him some, like, Scott, if you do the fast count, uh, we're going to pay you handsomely. You know, he didn't it's he didn't he didn't say, you know, when they made the deal that we're going to fire you because you do this fast count. We're going to make it look like a good show like you worked with Daniel Bryan. I would like to see some kind of controversy come out because I mean with the whole uh Vince screwed Brett thing in Montreal, that kind of that 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 thing kind of didn't have a whole lot of solid evidence or closure, you know. Um, I would like to see something like that come out. You know, we've had no confidence in Triple H before. He'll still remain the COO behind doors. I'd just like to see a little bit more of a storyline between Daniel Bryan and the establishment. I think they've kind of cooled off of that because Triple H is like, they're they're making it seem like Triple H is like, oh, they're catching on to us. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to arouse any suspicions, you know, but something's got to happen with that whole storyline. That's got to have a finish. They can't just start that and then move on. Well, I think it's just 
you know, letting it slowly go. They're, they're yeah. not going to rush it. And that's the smartest thing they could do. And they've been getting better at this the last couple of years. It's not rushing stories. They're, they're letting him cook on you for a little bit, which is a lot better. And to go to your point, you're saying about him paying off Scott Armstrong. I mean, if you remember in the, the segment where he told him that he was letting him go, he was like, I'm going to take care of you. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Like he's going to give him hush money. Uh, that's I got, exactly, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. I got a theory on this whole thing, and I we all know we're going to get the Daniel Bryan versus Triple H match eventually, right? Ah, uh, yes. Wouldn't you, would it wouldn't surprise me if the title stays vacated after Battleground for some fucked up reason? Triple H made an off comment like a few months ago, and I think well, not a month ago, say a month ago, um, and I think it meant a little more than what people let it go for. The WWE title is mine and is my property, and Randy Orton is just holding it for me. I think it's going to lead to him having a power trip and wanting to hold the belt, and Daniel Bryan's going to end up taking it from him. I see him putting himself in the main event picture, partially for his own ego, ego, and partially just because I think, well, I don't know. I just, that's just my theory behind it. It just seems like they're teasing towards it a little. He has a freaking DVD called Thy Kingdom Come. I mean, come on. How can he not insert himself into the spotlight once again? He's the king of kings. I mean, he did, he did it for during the CM Punk feud and got his win over CM Punk, which Punk should have got back, by the way. Uh, I, just, so, I, just, I don't see I You've got to admit, it seems like it's something he'd do. Yes, it is something he'd do, but I just can't. You know, of all the WWE superstars who get DVDs, nobody's title, nobody has ever been as egotistical as Thy Kingdom Come. It's always been, you know, their their nickname, the Viper, or, you know, the most electrifying man in all of entertainment. It's never been... <laughs> how, like, I, how is that not egotistical? Because he is the most electrifying man in all of entertainment. I mean, when he comes out, the crowd always gives him a pop. It doesn't matter if you like him or not. Well, you know, he we, haven't had, gets... we haven't had Nicolas Cage come out in front of a wrestling crowd. So oh. We don't... oh, God. I can imagine the ECW days when they were throwing shit into the ring. That's what I'd do if Nicolas Cage ever came out in a wrestling ring. The rise and fall of the Ultimate Warrior. Hey, did you guys hear Dixie Carter turned heel? Oh, my God. Did you see them steal steal basically the same storyline that they're doing with Daniel Bryan right now? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. No, because I don't watch TNA. Oh, CM Punk's best in the world. There's another one. So AJ basically came out and called Dixie Carter a liar and a bitch for firing all these you know, uh, all these TNA uh, wrestlers who were basically there from the beginning and just, you know, throwing them out on their ass. And then Dixie comes out and basically pulls a Triple H. Or, no, sorry, it was more like a Stephanie McMahon because she basically called him a B-plus wrestler. The same thing. It was, it was, I was watching it and going, wow, where have I seen this before? I was really hoping to just mention that in passing. I really don't want to talk about TNA. No, 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 let's go on. But- but Dixie Carter did turn heel. That's something that actually happened. Something else that's probably worth only mentioning in passing is WWE has a new app on the market. It's called John Cena's Fast Lane, and it's basically a game where you're racing cars customized with John Cena logos on them. Fancy. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> what did he do? Um, so to start writing things I got here from the top, Kofi Kingston versus Alberto Del Rio. I believe JD said he really liked this match. I, I can't say I agree. I thought this match just kind of was drawn out. Um, the the crowd started doing that thing that they've been doing ever since the night after WrestleMania where they just chant as many random things as they can. They were hitting <laughs> Randy Savage. They were doing the Olay chant. Translation, we do not give a fuck about this match. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Del Rio ends up getting the win with the cross arm breaker. Poor Kofi. I thought he was starting to build some steam back. Up and you know maybe he still is. Del Rio is the world champion, but did not go in his favor tonight. What would you guys think, Paul? Yeah. Did you enjoy this? Um, I I honestly watching it, I thought Kofi had to slow down because of Del Rio. Because how, how many matches have they had? Like maybe two or three before. Um, it, it looked like Del Rio was slowing Kofi down the whole time. You know, walking behind the barricade while Kofi's trying to get going in the ring. Um, just kind of, you know, taking his time. And I thought it was really it was really off-putting because usually when Kofi's in the ring, I never change the channel because he's always go, 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 and he's always trying new things. And he had a great counter. Del Rio was going for the cross arm breaker, and he had a great counter into... Well, they eventually said it was a DDT. It didn't look like a DDT to me, but it was a 
it was something I haven't seen out of Kofi before, and it was fucking great. Sorry, profanity. I don't know if you care about that on this show. No, we're PG-13. Okay, all right. But it was a great counter, and I thought, all right, here we go. We're getting into the climax of the match. Kofi's going to put on some awesome counters. And, you know, it just kind of ended up, you know, here's a cross arm breaker. Kofi misses with the Trouble in Paradise again. And it's just a cross arm breaker, and there's the end of the match. And Del Rio's going to put a beat down on somebody. Steven, were you more favorable? I believe you're on the same train as a lot of us are. We can't stand seeing Del Rio on our TVs. Okay, there's a few things that book me about Del Rio. And number one, your finishing move is the arm breaker or fucking arm bar. Work the fucking arm, Jesus. <laughs> it's common sense. I mean, I just don't... I don't get it. I don't like his moveset. I don't like his theme music. I don't like the way he looks. I don't like Del Rio. I've got no time for him. I think he's overrated. I don't think he's a main event level guy. And I think the only reason they're keeping the belt on him this long is so our Rey Mysterio can come back and take it. I mean, I think they've got... I think the reason they like to keep him around in the upper card seg- um, area is because he can speak Spanish and he's Mexican, so they can use him in that area. But other than that, there's not much going for this guy, and I was craving for RVD to beat him at the uh, Night of Champions, and I want him to beat him at the next pay-per-view, but I've heard he's going away, so that's probably not going to happen. I just can't stand Al- I just can't stand Alberto Del Rio, and it's not the good type of heat from me. It's the... I'm going to go take a shit type of heat, so. (laughs) Um, As far as the match goes, it's me nitpicking, but I couldn't enjoy it because of the way he was working the match, and I knew it was going to finish by the armbar. And like I said, this match just really dragged. And Kofi Kingston's supposed to be, like as you're saying, really high-paced, and I don't know if he was just trying to match Del Rio's style more, but it, it just went way too long. Well, the sad thing is, Del Rio used to be really good. He used to work the arm the entire match. Like, I've seen, I've seen matches by Del Rio where he's done nothing but focus on that arm. And he used to be really high-paced. He used to do a lot of drop kicks, do a lot of running into the corner. Uh, and, I, you know, like, where has this other Del Rio gone? Like, is he just... And he's just bored? He's like, oh, yeah, I'm world heavyweight champion. I get to go in the ring again. Blah de blah de blah. Like I don't get it. He used to be really good. So let me pose this question: What what what's Kofi Kingston's destiny at this point? Transitional IC champion for the rest of his career. That's all he'll ever be. No, Probably. he's got it. He's worked hard enough, and the company's recognized him enough where he's got to be a, a world heavyweight champion at the very least. I mean, he's had a WWE title match with Randy Orton before. Hasn't he? Uh, I mean, way, way back in the day when they were really trying to push him, and he was from Jam- <laughs> when he when he was from Jamaica and not Ghana, West Africa. Uh, it, I mean, you know, he's a hard worker and he's so good in the ring. I can't see them, you know, keeping him in that transitional IC title period forever. That's where he is now, definitely. Yes, but uh, I don't know. What do you say, Steve? Um, as far as I'm concerned, Kofi Kingston, for one, needs to bulk back up. That's not working for him, and drop the long pants, because as much as I'm missing long tights in pro wrestling, I look ridiculous on that guy. Um, it's the colors. <laughs> I don't know if it's just the colors or it's just the look. Um, I don't think they suit him, and maybe it's just me having an adjusting period like I did when Jericho changed his gear. But <laughs> as far as Kofi goes, he's got he can talk. He's got a great move set. His look is gone now, and he's been given the opportunity that many times and then pushed back down that I don't think the fans can get behind him anymore. I think he's just going to float around at the mid-card for the rest of his career unless they're starved of main event talent, which is a high possibility in the future come. Um, but, yeah, I don't see him. I think the highest moment he'll ever have was his feud with Randy Orton, and that's it. I believe Kofi and Brian, uh, Austin Pierre made asked in the chat if Kofi and Brian ever had a match. I'm pretty sure they feuded over the U.S. title once. Um, back when uh, Daniel Bryan had just turned heel, yeah. uh, Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan had a match on Raw. Yeah. Okay. Um, so moving on to the next match we had, which was also not very good. It was between the Wyatt family members, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper, going against the primetime players. 
this, if I thought the match before was boring, this was torturous. <laughs> I cannot stand this. It was so bad that the production team accidentally turned off the lights during the match. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was that. All right, guys, wrap it up. It's time to end this match. Um, the Wyatt family ends up picking up the victory, which I'm shocked because the primetime players have been on a hot streak as of late, and the Wyatt family have not. But, um, yeah, primetime players make a sacrifice losing in a losing effort to the Wyatt family members. Not really doing them any favors because they don't have a direction at the moment. I, none of this made any sense and was completely worthless as far as being on the show. Steven, what are your feelings on it? It was an average TV match, and that's all I've got to say about it. It didn't do anything for either guys. It was just there. Uh, Paul, you, you got any extra things to put on this? Well, like I said in the chat before the show, begin the boring chance. Because the only exciting part about that opening was the Wyatt family coming down to the ring. And it was kind of like, it kind of reminded me of like when you're at a show at a theater and just before intermission's done, they dim the lights outside in the lobby and then they turn them back up. Like, finish what you're doing, come back in, we're done. I just realized why this was on the card. Why? For the match later on in the evening, they wanted to have pretty much every guy on the team beaten down so that they didn't look weak. That's why they did it. That's why that's, that's the only reason I can see they did it. Uh, it was like it got it got kind of exciting when Titus O'Neil got a tag because, you know, like I said he's a great athlete and he can he can he can light up a crowd with his moves. He's getting better at it, but yeah. No, just wow, 2 out of 10 if I have to rate this one. Um yeah, so I think it's not talking about that. The, the, I just wish the Wyatts would go away already. Right. I, I'm over it. Like, the only good contribution they've really made to wrestling history is their theme song. And as you were saying, the best part of the match is when they were coming down and the entire crowd was clapping together in sync. And no, mm-hmm. it's not because they were behind the Wyatts. It's because it was a hot crowd and they really liked that song a lot. Yeah, and NXT, the fans used to just clap and sway side to side. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty much the theme music that they've got going for them. I'm still a bit behind Bray Wyatt, not so much the Wyatt family team, but there's still hope there. What What do you guys think of Sister Abigail as a finisher? I think it's shit. I don't I like the, mind I like, it. I like the whole kiss to the forehead. It just doesn't seem to have enough velocity, and he has to hit it on the right guy, and the right guy's got to be selling it, or otherwise it just looks like a dud. It just seems like too many people have that kind of move. It reminds me a lot of Dean Ambrose's finishing move. It's a lot like Dean Ambrose's. It's a lot like Crossroads. It's yeah. a lot like uh, R Truth's finisher. Um, who else? Uh, How did like Crossroads was like that? Yeah. And the way he's like spinning with them. I yeah. guess. No, I wouldn't say that so much. But the other comparisons you're right on. I think the Wyatt family would be a little bit more enticing if they actually let Rowan and Harper talk a little bit. Like. I no. I, no, I understand. No, I understand. Bray Wyatt is the mouthpiece. He is the leader of the group, and everything. But you know, like, give him a little bit more depth is what I'm saying. Give the whole faction a little bit more depth because that's what the Shield has. They have depth. Um, that's what the Straight Edge Society had for a little bit. They had depth. I mean. Yeah, Luke Gallows and Serena weren't the best talkers, but at least they talked. At least they brought something to the group. These guys bring nothing but muscle, and that gets boring after a while. <laughs> oh, awesome. In regards, yeah, to B, in regards to Big A, they gave him three weeks off, and he said, that's enough. That's not enough. He'll take five. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um Next bit we had here, also a relatively passable match. We had Fandango versus Santino Morella. I was nervous because Santino Morella has been on a little bit of a streak since making his return from injury. But Fandango did manage to get a two-week-in-a-row victory with his flying leg drop. Fandango hopefully on the upswing after his long-term losing streak of, well, maybe not necessarily losing, but always walking out and, and losing, tapping out to uh, the figure four leg lock in less than a second. Walking out's a loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not a pin or a submission, but it still counts as a loss. You're right. Just embrace the loss, Payton. Well, it looks like it's turning around for Fandango. Thank goodness. I, I This guy is absolutely one of the hottest young guys they have, and I don't mean like looks-wise, but I mean he's got a ton of talent. I think he's right under Dolph Ziggler, the second-best bumper they got in the company. No one can look like they're taking a beating like Fandango. He's got a lot of talent. He's willing to put his body on the line. He's a hard worker. 
this guy deserves a little bit better than the spot he's been in recently, all because he got that stupid concussion from Zack Ryder, who got rewarded tonight with a main event matchup. You know, good for you, Zack Ryder. As far as the bestseller goes, I give the distinction to Seth Rollins. You don't see it very often because he's not on the receiving end. Oh, he's a fantastic seller. Have you seen how he takes that knee? He yeah. gets turned inside fucking out. It's awesome. He almost flipped over. Yeah, it looks like he like he gets hit that hard. It looks like he's gonna eat his own dick when he gets flipped <laughs> over. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was great. Hmm. Oh god, I think they changed the decision of this match. Santino was in the ring already. He didn't have an entrance, right? I don't remember. I, I, don't, I don't. I, I actually I tuned out of this match, so I, there's not much I can cover on it. I don't even know who won. I don't think Santino. I don't think Santino had an entrance on this match, but I think the minute Fandango's music started and the Chicago crowd started fang- Fandangoing like nobody's business, I mean it was pr- like it, it gets loud, but tonight it was especially loud. I think they 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 contacted the referee with his earpiece and was like, "Okay, Fandango hits his leg finisher and it's over because the, this crowd is just you know not feeling Santino." True that. Um, next match we had, it was the 10 Divas tag match. I couldn't even tell you all of them that were in it because, heck, you didn't really get to see most of them in the match. And if you blinked, you missed the, the complete match. Um, the final bit of it was Brie Bella getting a quick pin on AJ Lee. I believe she'd use the X Factor to finish her off. I don't know what the fuck her moves are called. Don't call it the X Factor. I don't want her and Sean Waltman being compared. <laughs> Why not? They're like the same size. <laughs> yeah, but Brie yeah, but Bella she can't has, do as many drugs. N- Brie Bella hasn't had sex with China either, so I mean, come on, let's let's put them on different levels here. Yeah, well, anything to add to this match other than it just was there? Mm. <laughs> I'd rather talk about Sean Waltman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, X Pac, how you doing? Uh, well, then I guess the last thing to talk about here was Randy Orton's match. He, we had a fan poll of who Randy Orton would face in this. It was between Rob Van Dam, R-Truth, and Dolph Ziggler. Rob Van Dam winning, I believe it was like 46% or something like that. Uh, so Rob Van Dam comes out. He ends up getting knocked off the rope and getting completely beaten down on the outside of the ring, very similar to what Randy Orton did to The Miz last week. Red, uh, RVD would end up coming out later in the night all bandaged up. Possibly this could be a way of writing off RVD if he is, uh, if it's to be believed that we may not be seeing him for a while. So, um, no, are you guys going to miss RVD, Steven? I know you were just seeing him at Night of I'm Champions a huge Live. Ob- I'm a huge RVD, Mark. I'm good at that he's going away. I mean, I'm pissed off that he's not going to be in 2K14. So, I'm very Wait. upset that he's going away. Wait, he's not even in 2K14? The Fandango isn't in it, Curtis Axel isn't in it, Bray Wyatt isn't in it, the Usos aren't in it. Stupid. Uh, Not even DLC? Not even DLC? That hasn't been announced yet, but it shouldn't have to fucking be on DLC. They've got fucking fucking Goldberg in there, and they can't put their current roster on. Well, you know what the beautiful thing is? That these games always have such an awesome creator community. So, I mean, everyone will end up being available in the game. I don't know. We, we're we probably the bitchiest community when it comes to video games. We'll just cry until we get it. <laughs> I remember when it was just WCW versus NWO on N64. And I was just so happy to have Frankenstein. In. <laughs> Sorry, I got nostalgic there. It's all good. What, what about uh, tonight's matchup, Randy Orton versus Rob Van Dam, though? What did you think of that, Paul? Um, y- You know, I... I, I knew it was going to end up with Randy Orton putting a beat down on him because, I mean, they're trying to push this whole, the whole, oh, it's the old vicious Randy Orton coming back. And I'm like, yeah, if you want him to be vicious, shave his head and shave his beard. Because when he was doing his whole, when him and John Cena had the feud and it boiled up to that breaking point, last standing, last man standing match, he looked pretty fucking vicious with just a bald head, no beard. No, no, nothing. Just you know those goddamn no, eyes. Fear the Orton neck beard. He he looked pretty badass back then. I misheard you for a second, and I just pictured Seamus bold. <laughs> wow, that's you mean weird. Eric Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you you mean. know, there was a point where I could never picture Kurt Angle bald, and then he went bald, and now I can't picture him any other way. Um, uh, I thought it was I thought it was an okay match. I love, I've been a huge RVD fan ever since I've started watching wrestling. And I'm starting to, 
I hate to say this, I'm starting to grow up and I'm starting to see the fatigue and the the age creep up on him and he's only able to do so much. He's still able to do a lot, but you know, I mean, it's 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 just, you know, it's not the same. It's uh, kind of the same with Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Oh yeah, Rey Mysterio got old and he stuck to his same set of moves ever since he won the World Heavyweight Championship. He was like, all right, I'm World Heavyweight Champ. I don't have to work anymore. I, I can't blame Van Damme or Rey Mysterio. When you're at a certain point, you just do what you have to do. Oh, no, no. I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. I understand it completely. I'm just, you know, it's just kind of saddens me being a fan of, you know, both those guys for so yeah. long. Yeah, growing up, it's kind of sad to see where they was and where they are now. Yeah, uh, but I mean, you know, it it ended the way it had to end. RVD had to get beaten up. Uh, I, you know, I I honestly think they're still gonna have him versus Del Rio at Battleground. I don't know why, but it's just this nagging feeling in the back of my head. You know, Damian Sandow is way too smart to, you know, just cash in. You know, pull a John Cena and be like, hey, I'm gonna cash this in at Battleground, and we're gonna have a legitimate match. No, Damian Sandow's not gonna do that. Uh, then Especially there's gotta be Del Rio. Yes, yeah, no, no. So if, no. if they did have an injured RVD belt, I'll beat Alberto Del Rio. It would be the perfect chance. Yeah, and then RVD, after Battleground, gets to go have his vacation and get as high as he fucking wants. Um, but, yeah, I don't see anybody else challenging him for the belt right now. They really haven't built up a story for anybody else to challenge Del Rio for the world championship. So it's got to be RVD at least until Battleground ends. That's what I think. But uh, overall tonight, it was an okay match. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't even see most of the match. It happened kind of fast. Yeah. yeah. This whole show just really happened kind of fast. That's a good thing, though. Three hours is a long time. Fuck yeah. It really is. Like I said, the past couple of weeks, absolute chores to make it through those three hours. Tonight, it just kind of went by. It's not like I'm feeling like, oh my god, that show was so amazing. It just, it just, uh, I, got, I got to watch an enjoyable show. That, hey, I got to watch some good wrestling. Raw's really weird now that it's three hours because it lasts longer because it overruns five to fifteen minutes. It's, it's actually longer than their fucking pay per views. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Sandow wasn't on the show tonight either. Yeah, Big E's gone and Sandow was gone tonight. Not to mention all the people who are injured or out making movies. There, there was a lot of people missing. It was Big weird because Sandow got beat by Santino last week. On Raw, and nothing happened this SmackDown. I think maybe I, there was one match. I don't I, know. It was weird not seeing him. I'd be putting Big E with AJ right now. I mean, she's got all the odds stacked against her. It's probably the best time for him to be around, wouldn't it? And, and then he beats up on all those women. Three or five. But every single woman can find a guy then, and that could be like a big match we have someday. Did anybody see that Tamina was actually out tonight? Tamina? No, oh, she's still what? employed. She carried she carried AJ away from the ring after they lost. Huh? Yeah, that was. I was like, wait a minute, is that is that Tamina Snuka? Where the fuck has she been? Whatever she, happened with her? She was like with the Usos, and then she wasn't, and then I kind of lost track of what she did for the rest of her career. No, uh, yeah, they 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 realized that the female Snuka does is not greater than or equal to the male Snuka. Well, neither was the son snooker. Yeah, I was about to say, who are you talking about, the male snooker, Sim? I'm talking about Jimmy Superfly. Oh. Yeah, because Sim, neither Sim or uh, the Tamina has been very good. <laughs> well, we haven't gotten to see enough of Tamina, honestly. Uh, yeah. Tamina, though, I believe she is currently filming Hercules with uh, family relative Dwayne the Rock Johnson. she playing Hercules? <laughs> <laughs> I believe she's playing the Hydra. Uh, yeah, seems legit. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go around a bit here. We uh, Let me ask you guys your high point, your low point for the show tonight. Steven? Um, shit, my high point, Stephanie shooting on the Miz. That was funny as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, low point, everything went by really fast, as you said, so I couldn't concentrate on something that I hated. I'm just going to say Alberto Del Rio, because fuck Alberto. <laughs> Steven? I'm oh, sorry, uh, Paul? Um, oh, God, high point... Probably the final match of the night, the 11-on-3 handicap match. Uh, that was uh, very well executed. It, it didn't make any one side seem overly dominant. It was uh, 
it, it, it progressed very well and had a good uh, good story arc from beginning to end. Uh, low point, shit. I gotta agree with Steven. Alberto Del Rio just put me the fuck to sleep. <laughs> so I think the chat and ourselves are in agreement. Fuck Del Rio. Yeah, yeah. fuck Del Rio. Yeah. Go go through the chats ones here. Also, Piano Man. High point was the main event. His low point was the new John Cena iPhone app. <laughs> uh, Corey Kraus. High point was Roman Reigns. The low point Del Rio. Because yes, fuck Del Rio. <laughs> Um, and for my high point, low point, I'm going to say my high point of the evening is probably a tie between the Miz TV segment, which was absolutely fantastic. Stephanie McMahon has been on point these last few weeks. I'm glad she's back and getting herself involved. Um, I would say a, a little bit below that is Fandango getting back on a winning streak, having a lot of great crowd support tonight. I'm a big fan of the guy, and I, I hope this continues to make big things for him. My low point absolutely will have to be Eric Rowan and Luke Harper versus the primetime players. I just noticed something. This might be the first in uh, Mega Powers radio history that ye- someone said a good Miss TV segment. <laughs> oh, no, no. It was just uh, they, they had that one with John Cena and Daniel Bryan not too long ago. That we I, don't even call that a, I, didn't, I don't even call that a Miss TV segment. It was like, hi, I'm the Miss. Uh, I'm going to go stand in the corner now. Well, there was also that Miss TV segment a couple months ago where the Bella's boob showed. That was pretty Ooh, cool. Ooh, that was good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. We, we we got some good Miz TV memories this year. Most of them not involved in the Miz. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is absolutely true. Uh, but yeah, my low point absolutely the Wyatt family. That that I'm just over these guys. Rowan started wrestling that match by the way with a sheep mask on. I don't think we mentioned that before. What the crap was that? Uh, he took it off like right after he uh, scoop slammed. Darren Young. He didn't have it on for too long. Yeah, and the weird part is he was, like, teasing, taking it off, and no one fucking reacted. It was like, <laughs> it was like uh, okay. Yeah, we've seen your face before. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the fuck is he doing? He doesn't he's even know what new, he's doing out there. He's the new Kane, except with a sheet mask. And no one gives a shit. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, let's uh, do our final round here. Go around and get your closing words for the evening and any plugs you want to push out there, Paul. Um, uh, keep on listening to Mega Powers Radio. They always do good stuff. I got a couple of DJ gigs coming up October 17th and the 24th uh, to be determined where they will be at, but I will give you updates as they come along. All right, fantastic, man. Keep on rocking in the free world. Sweet. Steven, any any plugs? I know you got your shows you want to push here, right? Unanimous decision, mixed martial art is now on Tuesdays because Tuesdays are better than Saturdays. Um, it's going to be on at 8 p.m. And damn, have we got a show to discuss because I don't know if any of you guys tuned into UFC 165 with Jones versus Alexander Gustafson, but that is definitely fight of the year. That was an amazing main event and probably the best fight in light heavyweight history. So we're going to be hitting on that a lot. Make sure you follow at UDMMA on Twitter for any updates on the show. Uh, we've got a group on Facebook, and you can follow me at S-T-E-W-A-G-O, Steve Wago on Twitter. Oh, fantastic. And if anyone would like to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, you can follow me using the handle M-R-P-A-D-E-N. That's Mr. Payton. Check out everything we got going on here at Mega Powers Radio, megapowersradio.com, facebook.com slash megapowersradio, youtube.com slash megapowersradio is where you can find all of our archived editions of our shows. You can also find the archived edition of this show at keepingkfabe.com, as well as checking out the other radio show we do, which we do Thursday nights at 9 p.m. here at Mega Powers Radio called Keeping Kayfabe Live, where we are more of a nostalgia-based wrestling show. We pick a match from the past, go in-depth about it, check it out. Uh, Also, check out SparkoutMoment.com, our our good friends over there. Tony Mango, who couldn't be with us tonight, he's got some other website work he had to take care of. But we always got to support them, make sure they get a shout-out here. Uh, And, of course, as I said, MegapowersRadio.com. We're here live every Monday night following the conclusion of Monday Night Raw. So, everyone, thank you for listening. Thanks for joining us here at the Monday Night Raw post show. I'm Mike Payton for Stephen Wigg for Paul Hibbert. Everyone have a fantastic evening, and we'll see y'all next week.